Hey guys, for our leveled reader today, we're going to be reading The Lucky Candlesticks. And this is by Gary Miller, and the illustrations are by Vitaly Konstantinov. On Sunday, Michael and his family always made a big dinner. Michael and his father prepared the ingredients for a salad and cooked pasta. Michael's mother made a delicious tomato sauce for the pasta using an old family recipe. When the salad was finished, Michael and his father set the table. First put out the silverware, Dad said. And remember, we have two guests coming tonight. Grandma and Grandpa are coming. Michael smiled. Sunday dinner with Grandma and Grandpa was always exciting. Do you have any family recipes that you help your parents cook with? Like, uh, Michael's family makes the tomato sauce and the pasta in this story. I would say my mom makes a really good taco soup. It's my favorite thing, and I love to help her make it. What do you make with your parents? Next, they set the plates, glasses, and salad bowls on the table. Dad asked Michael to put out the candlesticks, but Michael didn't want to. They were chipped and very old-fashioned looking. Why do we have to use these old things, Michael asked. That's a good question to ask your grandparents, Dad replied. Michael was glad that Grandma and Grandpa arrived early. He wanted to find out more about the candlesticks, but he waited until dinner time to ask his question. Once everyone had been served some pasta and salad, Michael got his chance. Grandpa, he asked, What's so important about those old candlesticks? Why do we have to use them every Sunday? Grandpa started to answer. Then he stopped and looked at Grandma. You tell him, Antonia, he said. It's your story after all. Michael, said Grandma, this story starts a long time ago. Grandma's story. When Grandpa and I got married, we lived in Italy. Grandpa worked in his brother's furniture shop. He did a good job, but he didn't like working for his brother. He wanted a shop of his own. I want us to stop for a minute and notice how the fonts have changed. So do you see how when they're in the present or the current time, it's in this font. But when they're in the past, looking back when Grandpa was very young, the fonts changed. I wonder if the writer did that on purpose. Talk with someone near you about why you think that might have happened. One day, Grandpa brought home an advertisement. It was a ship that took people to America. In America, Grandpa said to me, good jobs are everywhere. I can get a job in a furniture shop and save my money. Then I can start a shop of my own. As soon as we could, Grandpa and I bought tickets to America. Two weeks after that, our boat was ready to sail. On our way to the boat that morning, I spied a pair of candlesticks in the marketplace. Grandpa thought they were ugly, but I bought them anyway to bring them to our home in America. Life in America wasn't as easy as Grandpa had heard. He visited every furniture shop in the city, but he couldn't find a job. Soon he began to worry that his dream would never come true. While Grandpa looked for work, I began to fix up our new apartment. It was small, but I did my best to make it look like home. I had forgotten about the candlesticks. They were still packed away somewhere. Finally, Grandpa found a job at a bakery. The job didn't pay much, and it was hard. All day long, Grandpa lifted heavy bags of flowers and made mixed huge bowls of bread dough. At night, he came home with an aching back and flour in his hair. Grandpa was ready to give up, but he didn't tell me. He didn't want me to worry. One night when Grandpa came home from the bakery, he was surprised to see the table set for a fancy dinner. I made his favorite pasta sauce. At the center of the table sat two candlesticks. I found them this morning, I said. I'm sure they'll bring us luck. Grandpa didn't believe they could, but he kept quiet. The next morning, a new customer came into the bakery. His name was Mr. Williston. He was opening a restaurant, and he wanted to buy bread to go with his meals. Bread wasn't all that Mr. Williston had in mind. I need 20 new dining tables, he said, but I can't find anyone to build them. Grandpa saw his chance. He quit the bakery job and went to work for Mr. Williston. Eventually, Grandpa had a shop all his own. Grandpa and I brought our own house and moved in. We put out lucky candlesticks at our dinner table every Sunday. Oh, and look, that font has changed again. So it was this font, and now it's a different one. So we know that we're back in the present time with Michael and his family and Grandma and Grandpa. Michael looked at the candlesticks again. They didn't seem ugly anymore. In fact, they looked beautiful. But Michael had another question. How did the candlesticks get to our house, Michael asked Grandma. Since your mother was my oldest child, I gave them to her when she grew up and left home, Grandma said. Does that mean what I think it does, Michael asked his mother. That's right, Mom said with a smile. Someday they'll be at your dinner table. And you can tell the story to your children, Grandma said smiling. This book makes me think a lot of our current read aloud, Lily and Miss Liberty, because it talks about families coming from other countries or immigrants coming to America. So, cool text-to-text -text connection for you there. 
I'm, as always, going to put the response questions down in the description box so that you can answer them and make sure that you are understanding and comprehending the story. I'll see you guys in the next read aloud. Bye.